Well, hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. Pastor Mike here. Welcome to our midweek meditation. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but Easter is wrapping up and this Sunday is Pentecost. I even wore red for this video because it's customary in the church that on Pentecost, uh, you know, people wear red to help celebrate that day. And that's really what, uh, you know, the midweek meditation is going to be looking at. Last week, I I focus on a lot of what, you know, the church should be doing, we should be doing. And that's actually a really good lead-in and transition to a Pentecost. Because Pentecost is this, this holiday, this feast day, this important day that really celebrates the Spirit. Now, that covers a lot of real estate, right? That covers a lot of the stuff in the third article of the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. As hopefully every confirmation student that watches this intently knows. Uh, as well, it deals with the Spirit's work throughout the church, which is often the main focus. You know, some people call it the church's birthday, or this, that, and the other. And, you know, you can do many things with that. But ultimately, Pentecost is the day that the Holy Spirit is poured out upon God's people, and empowers them, and guides them, and leads them into mission and ministry. And that's really, really the focus of the day. Um, I know my home congregation is celebrating an anniversary, and I'm hoping to get there later in the day for that. And often it is the Pentecost days where churches celebrate those anniversaries because, you know, the church is doing the work of the Holy Spirit. I know we did. Uh, it's, it, it's a key day for that. But even as we think about that, we can sometimes lose sight of the Spirit's role in that. Now, what do I mean by that? And I'm not really going to get into this in the sermon. Um, but when we often talk about the Holy Spirit, we sometimes, sometimes really make it about us. Now, that's easy to do. Because especially as we understand the Holy Spirit, His work in baptism, because we get a measure of the Spirit poured out upon us. When I do confirmation, uh, which is going to be happening some, um, some churches do it on Pentecost, uh, we will pray for an extra measure of the Spirit for, you know, those kiddos. Over and over again, you know, a lot of the stuff involving us is the Spirit. But one of the interesting things that I have found is sometimes when we get very caught up in the work of the church, it becomes about us in many negative ways. It either becomes about us and fulfilling our desires and wants. You know, the church is about meeting my needs. You know, I'm the pastor and everything that happens should meet my needs. No, nor is it about any individual's needs. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that we should say your needs don't matter. But if that's the only thing that matters, it needs to be in balance with all the other pieces. As well, when we view the work of, and I know sometimes uh, certain denominations get caught up in this, and that the work of saving souls is up to us, uh, that's, that's pretty heavy. Ultimately, when we as the church live the faith, we need to be active, but we need to always be mindful that the Spirit is at work. And the Spirit is always working through us, and it is the Spirit's work that enlightens faith, brings faith, brings wisdom, brings all those things. And in that understanding, we have one of the hardest things to grasp, and that's balance. What is our responsibility? What's the Spirit's responsibility? What does the Spirit accomplish and what do we accomplish? And to be clear on that, because I think we often try to overreach. Um, we, I think, try to grab stuff out of the Spirit's hands or um, try to sit back and dump it all on Him. I don't think either of those are wise. But I think we, in our lives of prayer, can really, really try to get the discernment of what is the Spirit calling me to do? What is the Spirit handling in this? What does the Spirit want me to do? And how is God at work in all of this? Because it's amazing. Because when you see the Pentecost story, Peter talked. I mean, he ran his mouth. But the Spirit is the one that made him be able to be understood by everybody. I mean, think about that. There is that synergy in the Spirit was using Peter to say all those things. Uh, the Spirit guides Paul over and over again in these moments, gives him wisdom, gives him all these other sorts of things. Over and over again, we can see, if we're willing to pull back, the Spirit's work. And brothers and sisters, that is the hope. 
Um, again, the world is an interesting spot, and the church is hopefully, again, committed to uh, serving, living out this faith. And there's often pitfalls in either saying, well, uh, you know, we'll sit back and we'll let Jesus do it. You know, we don't have to do anything. We can be passive. Not so much. Or we can fall into everything is dependent upon us. You know, if, if we don't have the perfect pastor give the perfect sermons at the perfect times and the perfect weeks, well, what's going to happen? Uh, I'm clearly not the perfect pastor. I'll be the first, first person to say that. And I think perfect pastor is an oxymoron. Any pastor you think is perfect, God bless. We're human beings. What we need to, again, be mindful of is that we can strike this balance. It's harder. It's harder than being over-functioning or under-functioning. Being clear on whose is what and what is whose is a blessed thing. And maybe ultimately the Trinity the next Sunday can help us understand all those pieces as well. Well, that's my Pentecost ramble. And who knows, maybe certain other things happening in the world are influencing my view on the Spirit this week. And even then, you know, contemplating, you know, what the Spirit means and all these wonderful texts coming up and the gifts of the Spirit. A lot to talk about, especially because we usually don't talk about the Spirit a lot. So Lord in the creek don't rise, uh, the Spirit will give me wisdom to talk about Him on Sunday. Well, blessings, brothers and sisters. Hopefully things continue to find you well. We'll talk to you later now.